To welcome Byron Shen uh, to the stage. Byron serves on the University of South Florida System Board of Trustees and is board chairman for USF Sarasota Manatee Campus and also past chairman of the Manatee Chamber of Commerce. So I'll let Byron take over. Thank you. Well, I know, Coach, we're here to celebrate USF and our hometown heroes. We're very fortunate, and I'm very privileged to introduce them. And Coach Tiger wanted them to each say a little bit of something about themselves, but they're all humble guys. So I, I said, we got to say a couple quick things about them. Okay, and we'll start with the legend, Joe Canan. Joe jo joined the Bulls coaching staff in the spring of 15 as our senior offensive analyst. He won five state titles, 290 games as a head coach at Manatee in 29 seasons. He also won one of those state titles with Willie, our head coach, as the quarterback. <clears throat> he had a 290-72 record. He was inducted into the Florida Athletic Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 2007, was one of 12 coaches named to the Florida All Century High School coaching staff for the first 100 years of prep football in the state. In 2013, he won top, he was one of the top voting, or he was top voted high school coach in Florida by USA Today. He consults with the Bulls coaching staff, and I gotta be careful with the NCAA rules, but <laughs> we have full-time people watching this stuff. Um, He's consulting with the Bulls coaching staff and analyzing games and practice film, but he does not have any on-field coaching duties, quote unquote. A member of the Florida Athletic Coaches Hall of Fame, he has consulted top college coaches throughout his career, including Nebraska's Tom Osborne and Gus Malzahn of Auburn. And as y'all know, even It's tough. When I was this big, sorry. And then I took my son to Manatee High, and we were watching Willie play as quarterback. And I have friends of my sons that played for Raymond Woody. So we have a lot of depth here of Manatee County. <laughs> Now I want to introduce Raymond Woody. He was promoted to our defensive coordinator recently in January. He took over the direction of our aggressive and swarming Bull Sharks defense. He joined the USF football, football staff in 2012 when we hired Willie. And he, at the time, he was a linebackers coach and was promoted to assistant head coach, linebacker, special teams coach prior to the 15 season. And he is a secret weapon at recruiting also. He came to USF after serving three seasons as a defensive assistant under Willie Taggart at Western Kentucky. He was working with the defensive ends and linebackers. Imagine, I think he likes to hit. He also logged 13 years as a head football coach at the man at high school level, both at Palmetto and at Bayshore. And at Bayshore, he was the youngest head football coach at 23 years of age. Woody helped Taggart and the USF secure the top-ranked recruiting class in our conference in 2014 and 15 and was named the top recruiter in the American by rivals in 2014. In his first three seasons at USF, he has guided a pair of linebackers to all conference honors and won to lead the nation in the NCAA Statistic Championship in the champions. There's so much here I'm trying to abbreviate. 
Woody was the youngest high school coach that I mentioned at 23. He lettered as an outside linebacker and strong safety at Bethune-Cookman from 92 to 95. He's a native of Palmetto. I think he was born in Bradenton like I was. He's a graduate of Palmetto High. He holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Bethune-Cookman and a master's in education from National Lewis University. He, is, he has his wife, Stephanie, and three children, Raymond, Elena, and Caden. And then last but not least, our head coach. There's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. <laughs> Prayer really works. Willie is calm on the outside, but he's very focused, he's disciplined, and he's a heck of a competitor. We're proud to have we're proud to have him as our leader. Sorry to get choked up. We named Willie as our head coach in December of 2012 after being interviewed with other coaches for this position after Coach Holtz. Our team, our recruiting was in shambles, and we had come from a place where we were used to winning, and we were moving forward, and the likes of Bob Turner and Bob Bartz were behind the scenes telling me, we gotta do something, we gotta do something. What about Willie, what about Willie? So, through the grace of God, came to USF after spending three seasons as head co football coach at his alma mater at Western Kentucky. He, he led a dramatic turnaround there, go figure, for the Hilltoppers, and now he did it with us. He had a successful run at Stanford where he helped the Cardinals into being a national powerhouse with the help of some family friends that y'all might know in the coaching business. He served as the running back coach there at Stanford from 2007 to 2009. And as you all know, as a quarterback, he knew something about running and throwing. In Taggart's first year calm plays at Western Kentucky, he ran for 293 yards per game average. That's lighting it up. Taggart, who set 11 Western Kentucky records, had his jersey retired in 1999. He was then recruited by Jim Harbaugh to come back and play, or come back and coach. And um, so then after graduation from Western Kentucky where he got a bachelor's degree in the social science in 1998. So he did a little Stanford, did a little Western Kentucky, and now he's at USF. He led Manatee High to a state title in his junior year, and he got us to the final playoffs his senior year. He has a wife, Tanisha, three children, Willie Jr., Jackson, and the newest to daughter, Morgan. So at this time, Willie, it's yours. So we want Willie to get it started, and then we're going to have some questions and answers, and the other coaches will chime in. He's the boss. Good afternoon. How y'all doing? I feel great to be back home. Great to see some familiar face. Uh, but it's also great to be a bull. Great time to be a bull. Uh, appreciate those kind words. Byron, uh, mean a lot. Um, lots are going on at USF, USF football, but uh, US, USF athletics in general, um, a lot of good days ahead of us um, and really excited about what's what's happening what's, I'm excited about what happened what's happening and uh, what's about to happen this upcoming season we uh, start spring ball next week so really really excited about that um, excited about watching our guys coming out and compete um, it's the first time since I've been there where we're gonna have pretty much competitive depth at every position that we have and I think we all know once you can get competitive depth 
amongst your football team or any team, um, you're going to get better as a team, and I expect for that from our football team this year. But with that being said, uh, I have something I really, really like to talk to you all about, something that's uh, very important. You know, when I, I took the job at, at USF here uh, three years ago, I mean, again, I had a vision of what I wanted this football program to look like, what I wanted it to be, and to be quite <coughs> frankly, uh, my vision probably wasn't any different than you all. You know, we want to win multiple championships in a first-class manner. Um, that's, that's our goal. And, and we haven't won them yet, but we're on our way. We're on our way. And with that being said, uh, coming off an eight-win season, we are at a critical time in our football program. And going forward, there's a role for you to play that is absolutely essential. Now, let me explain, all right? We served notice last year that we were a team to be working with. We established ourselves as one of, the, one of the several top teams in our league after starting at the bottom. Now our objective is to become a dominant football program in the American Conference and to create national identity. That's the next step. We're chasing greatness at USF. We're not there yet, and our American counterparts, they know we're not there yet. But they know we put ourselves in a position where we're not too far away from where we want to be. So all of them, I'm sure all of them this year, they <coughs> circled that little name, that USF on their schedule for the 2016 season. They circled our name. And they all will be waiting for us this year. We understand that. And what our opponents want us to do is make, make us be another one of those ordinary teams that have a good year, <coughs> make a little noise, get their people, their fan base excited, and then they can't build on that excitement and use it to propel their um, programs to, to something special. That's what they want from us. As a result, behind all that, a lot of our teams, sometimes those ordinary teams, they fall back in the pack and, and just become another ordinary team that occasionally wins some ball games year in and year out. Um, that's what our opponents want from us. What they may not realize is that USF is not an ordinary football team or program. The people who played, coached, administered, and supported our athletic program for nearly 60 years have left the heritage that makes us special. And I believe special people have a destiny to do special things. I believe in destiny, don't you? <laughs> Now, destiny doesn't always guarantee us outcome, but I believe it does give deserving people windows of opportunity. <clears throat> For us, that window is open now, but keeping it open depends on our ability to build on the excitement that we created and get all of our great fans to help us take the next step. That is why now is a critical time in our football program, and that is why there is an important role for each and every last one of you to play. Here's what I mean. We all know that it takes three coordinated parts to get our football program on a top level and keep it there. First, obviously, we have to put a good football team on the field. We have to recruit good players, and we have to coach them up. Second, we have to have the kind of institutional support that helps us, an institutional support that gives us the tools necessary to help build and maintain that team. The third part, though, the part that becomes the guiding force that sustains and justifies the first two parts is the unrelenting fan support. I'm talking about an army of Bull fans overflowing Ray J at home game. Fans who were playing their weekends around away game travel. Fans who become such a force at game time that it adds strength to the effort from our players on the field. Those first two parts are pretty well in place. We're recruiting good players, we're coaching them up. And clearly the institutional support by Judy Ginshaft and her administration is unsurpassed by any school in the country. Now we need the unrelenting, unrelenting fan support that, I, that will make us complete and allow us to fulfill our destiny. All right, I'm, I'm gonna use a relay race to make an analogy, all right? I don't wanna stretch this analogy too far. But the first leg of this relay 
would be the remarkable support by our influential alumni and friends and initiatives to make USF a major university with international reach. The second leg of that relay was the vision by President Betty Castro and Leroy Selman and her administration that saw major college football as a necessary part of that overall initiative. Now the third leg of that relay was actually the upgrade of facilities, the staff, the player talent level, and a clear demonstration on the field that we can compete at a high level. As of now, we have run those three legs pretty well. And we have put ourselves in position to realize our vision. But now the anchor leg of that race has to be run. And it has to be run by the army of Bull fans that I spoke of. Last fall, our, our home attendance dropped. Also last fall, if we had beaten Navy and beaten Memphis, we would have been playing for our first conference championship. So we all have some work to do. We know winning comes first, but as we start to win consistently, we have to increase our fan support. And if we can do that, our fan support will become the power supply that will energize the entire operation. Now, I know this sounds like I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm really not. I know you are already true believers, and I know you already know the crucial next step that I talk about depends on our fan, our fan base. So what I want to do today, I want to deputize each and every one of you <laughs> <laughs> right. and send you out on a mission. Call this Coach Taggart's call to action, all right? And here's what I want you to do. First, we all know some of our most enthusiastic fans out that, that's out there that, that we had in the past. They lost some of that enthusiasm um, simply because they're, they're, they honestly doubted that we, would su we could succeed at major college football. Well, I'm asking you to get them back. Get them back involved. Get them around our team. Get them to buy their season tickets. Okay? Then there's a bunches of new prospective fans out there that may be your friends, all right? They may follow us in the media. They may really wish us well, but they don't come to games. And with just a little encouragement from many of you, they might come, they might become Bulls faithful and, and come to all of our games and, and enjoy themselves out in tailgate, tailgate area on Saturdays. And finally, almost all of you are connected in some influential way in our local businesses, restaurants, civic club, churches, and media. And with your leadership and your influence and with the cooperation of our athletic department and with all of those groups can be an active participant in the great spectacle of major college football. And if you can get them connected, we will find ways to get them involved. So in your role as Coach Taggart Special Deputy, your specific mission is to, get, is to go out and get five new fans to buy season tickets. Five. Five. If you can't get five, get two. <laughs> get two. And if you try really hard and you can't get two, I'd be very proud of you if you can get one new fan in the fold. And you think of what that'll do to our university. And you think of the support that it'll do to our students and our student athletes. You know, you think about the national attention that it'll bring to our university. The increase in revenue enhance the overall growth of our university. You know, the source of pleasure and pride and enriching experience for all of us. Now, listen to me on this now. Please. Don't see this as a job, okay? Don't see this as a job. There can be great satisfaction in pulling people together in a worthy cause. And great fun in coming together and enjoying the success that follows. So I ask each and every last one of you to join us as we chase greatness, okay? And share with us the excellence that we intend to catch. Every time, Every time you go out and get a new fan, give me a call, okay? You get a new one, give me a call. If I'm not there, 
leave a message with Julie, our executive assistant, and I'll get back to you. All right? I'll get back to you. I will share with our football team your contribution that you made to them, and I guarantee you it'll make a difference in our football team. Guarantee you. So consider yourself deputized and consider, consider this Coach Taggart's call to action. I thank each and every last one of you for your support. I really do. Uh, there's big things ahead of us, big things ahead of us, but we can't do it without our fan support. And I think we all know what it was like around here when, when football started. And everyone talked about the winning. The winning came from our community. Our community got behind the Bulls, and we built this thing to something, where it's something to be reckoned with. And I think everyone always talked about USF being that sleeping giant. And, and the funny thing about it now, you, that giant is starting to wake up. And I tell each and every last one of you, Make sure you're a part of it. You want to be a part of it. You don't want to miss out on it because it's going to be something special. But again, I appreciate every last one of you. We have a really exciting football team. Um, a lot of guys coming back. You got the Bull Shark defense, and you got the uh, Gulf Coast offense. And we always say you got to be a Bull Shark in order to be in the Gulf Coast. You can't swim in the Gulf Coast unless you're a Bull Shark. So um, <laughs> we're excited about that. And, and I'm excited about having Coach Woody running our, our defense. He's going to do a great job. Um, always had great respect for, for Raymond Woody when he was, he was coaching the high school here and, and I was coaching in college. And I just remember coming back and watching his team and watching the discipline of his team. And I was always impressed. And I always told him back then, if I ever became a head coach, I was going to come back and get him. And I remember it was like five years after I told him that um, I became a head coach. And I remember making that phone call. And he thought I was playing around. You know, I was playing around, and uh, sure enough, I uh, was a man of my word, and, and I knew he'll, he would do a great job. And he's um, a lot of my success that I'm having as a head coach, a uh, big part of having Coach Woody with me. And um, he's doing a great job, like Byron spoke of, in, in recruiting, one of the best recruiters out there. And he's going to do a fantastic job coaching our defense. I think we all will be excited about Raymond Woody coaching our defense. You're going to see an aggressive defense be aggressive. They're going to get out the people. But to me, that's what South Florida is. That's what South Florida always been. And you're going to see an offense that aggressive and get out the people. That's what South Florida is. That's what South Florida always going to be. We're going to score a lot of points. We're going to score fast. And we want a lot of turnovers on defense. And uh, we want to make those tickets that everyone get. We're going to make them worth it. Okay, we have an outstanding quarterback coming back in Quentin Flowers. Uh, phenomenal athlete. Um, he can know, he's only going to get better. Uh, Marlon Mack, who's from Sarasota, uh, will be back at running back. Darius Johnson, another running back. Darius Tice, we're loaded back there. The receiver position, we're loaded out there. Um, I'm excited. I'm happy. Uh, it's the first time I can say we're loaded. You know, so um, <laughs> of course I'm fired up about, about the Bulls yeah. and where we're going to go. But uh, again, we need your help. We need that unrelenting fan base. That's what we need. That's a big reason why I took the job, because I knew the passion that we all have here in the Bay Area. And this is our team. This is our community team. You don't have to go that far to go watch a big time college football team. Just go right across the Skyway. If you're afraid of the Skyway, you can take 75. <laughs> all right, so, but, but we got different ways you can get there. So, so, and we have those Seminoles coming to town this year. So, um, but, we have a couple other teams. I don't want it to be just the Seminoles. I want us to show up every home game because the Bulls are playing. The Bulls are playing on Saturday. The Bulls are playing on Friday. I'm going to watch my Bulls play. My Bulls are some bad boys, and I'm going to watch them play. So uh, thank you all very much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for allowing me to be here. Again, uh, it's always my goal uh, to make my hometown proud. You know, uh, I'll take pride in that, and, um, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to do that. Um, that's all I have. I'll save the rest for Coach Canan and, and Coach Woody. And, and I talk about Coach Canan. We all talk about winning. Okay, it just didn't happen. Okay, it just didn't happen. You, you surround yourself around winners and you surround yourself around good people. Good things happen for you. And, and I would have been a fool not to go and search out the, my high school coach, a winner, a guy that taught me how to win um, and, and actually be a part of our staff. But Coach has been a, a great addition to our staff. And, um, it's fun to be around and just bring that winning attitude every single day, and it's contagious. And I think we all seeing um, us reap the benefits from it. So appreciate having Coach. Uh, 
Right now, the Manatee County boys are doing a pretty good job right here. I love it. Thank you all very much. Any questions? Anybody? How about the recruits? What do you got coming in this year? Recruits. Recruits, we have, um, how many we signed? Like 14, 15 guys? Um, 15. Very, very talented group. Um, it's not the biggest group that we have, um, but from a quality standpoint, uh, probably one of the best recruiting class we've had. You know, um, it's, it's going to be fun to watch these guys come in and compete too. You know, we've seen it the last couple of years where a lot of the freshmen have come in and, and played and some of them have taken jobs, you know, and that's always been our goal when I came is to go out and recruit guys to come take our current guys' job and so our current guys to keep their jobs. And again, I felt if we can get our program to that point, we're going to have a lot of success around there. So, so um, really excited about this class coming in and, and where it's going to take us. Transfer. Oh, yeah, we do have a couple of transfer. Um, uh, receiver, uh, Marquez Valdez, transferred from North, Car North Carolina State. He's from St. Pete, Lakewood. He is very, very talented. He's about 6'5", probably about 2'10". He can run like a deer. He can jump up and get the ball. You just throw the ball in his vicinity and he can go get it. He's going to be a great compliment to Rodney Adams. And then we have, uh, we have a linebacker that transferred to us from Texas, um, Cecil Cherry. He's going to be competing, and I'm excited to watch this kid play. His first day of practice, he came out and broke our offensive lineman's nose <laughs> in practice. <laughs> And, and after practice, I actually, I, I, I didn't know doing practice, but after practice, I see the, our offensive lineman blood coming out of his nose and like, Mac D, what happened to you? He's like, oh, I ran into that Cecil guy you guys recruited. <laughs> he said, he's going to be a good one, coach. <laughs> so really excited to see uh, those guys. Um, um, Austin Hudson is a kid transferred from Wisconsin as, as well. Um, so we're excited to see these guys go out. You know, they did a great job for us and, um, on the scout team, but now they got to memorize some plays and go out and do it, and really excited to see that this spring. Yeah. Finished number one in the conference. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, uh, we fell short. You know, we had some good showings on defense, but obviously, you know, the goal is finishing number one. Come on, we're not back home, Arthur. You got to have some questions for us now. Next. Yeah, yeah we've got uh, four players from Manatee County, uh, three from Manatee. Is that on? Yeah. You hear me? Three from Manatee High School uh, Mike Galati, uh, Brooks Larkin, they're both offensive linemen, uh, Greg Reeves. Um, who is a linebacker, they're going to convert him to a defensive end. And then Ryan Heinz from Braden River that was, came in, as, he played two years at, at State College of Florida in basketball and started uh, for Elliott Washington there and then transferred in last fall and we've moved him to tight end. He played scout team defense last year and uh, we got him beat up a little bit there to get him tough enough to go over to offense and be able to play there. Yeah, Okay, yeah, oh yeah, ODA. Uh, we've got Evan Wilson, a wide receiver. And then we've got several kids from uh, Sarasota County. Marlon Mack, who's led the conference in rushing the last two years. The, the offensive line, who's coming back? We've got to replace three guys uh, from our offensive line this past season. Um, which we had to do last year as well. We had to replace three guys up front. And, um, but we have um, Kofi, our left tackle, he's back. Um, we have Dominique Threek at guard, who's back. We have Cameron Ruff, who played some for us in, in the past, that'll come back and help us. And we have some young guys, like say Mike Galati, he's, he's gonna be competing for starting job at the center position. Um, we have a transfer in, Glenn Bethel, at, at one of the tackles position. And, um, and some young guys, like I say, that we've had in our program now for a couple of years, and now it's their time to step up and, 
and become the players that we all know they can be. So I'm excited about that. We have, uh, um, I might as well say this too, but we have a new old line coach. And I'm sure you guys have followed up that we have some new coaches as well. And, and, and Darren Hillier, he'll be coach Hiller. He'll be coaching our um, offensive line. He came from Cincinnati. Um, Cincinnati's had one of the top offenses in the country the last couple of years. And uh, we got T.J. Weiss, who comes from, from Michigan. He's coaching our receivers. And John Jensick, who's coaching our safety. He was the defensive coordinator at Tennessee this, this past year. And Sean King coming in, a uh, former buck, and coaching our quarterbacks. So we have some, some new guys. Uh, once again, we brought some new coaches in. Again, it's like every year we're finding new coaches. I think when I'm through coaching, I'm going to get into the search farm committee <laughs> and into something. But, but uh, really excited about the challenge of uh, getting it, putting everybody together again and coming together as, as a group. You know, that was probably, the, uh, you know, it was fun to win, you know, but it was really fun to, to see the, our, our entire football operation come together, from coaches coming together, the players and coaches' relationship coming together. and. And then to see everybody um, stay together when things were tough, you know. But I think a lot of that happened in the springtime when we, we focused on coming together and getting to know one another, you know. So we're in that process now. We're, we're building a new team. It's an entire new football team. It's not like um, last year's. And we got to all gel together once again to have a, a, a great year. I got a question. Yes, sir. I, I got a question for Joe and Woody, Coach Woody. When you were coaching in high school, you had to coach pretty much the students that were there that you could get to come out. Here we get to recruit and bring in the talent and the depth. So how, how different is it setting up defense and offense when you have this kind of depth and talent? And, and how much do you interface with the head coach throughout the weeks and in preparation to the season? Um, you know, basically, you know, in college, you know, you get an opportunity to go out and recruit guys, you know, for your scheme. You know, obviously in high school, you have what you have. You know, you have to make do. In college, I mean, you're getting graded on the guys that you bring in to fill those voids. You know, so, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's real exciting to go out, you know, around the country to find guys <laughs> you know, to play the scheme that you, you know, basically want to play, uh, agree, you know, from the head coach. So it's, it's really, it's, it's a good situation. Uh, in high school, uh, our philosophy was that we tried to get as many ninth graders that were coming to our school to go out for football. And we usually had 60 to 80 ninth graders on our freshman team. And you want to give them a taste of it because all they've, a lot of them have never played football. There's Patrick McNeil back there. I don't think he ever played football until he became a ninth grader, and he was a four-year starter at Florida State. You know, so we tried to take those kids, develop them, as you know, get them bigger, faster, stronger as they're going to grow. You know, the the kid that's a 110-pound uh, linebacker may be a 200-pound linebacker when he's a senior, and then by getting the numbers out and then having success at the lower levels, you start ingraining in them, you know, it's fun to win. The people that lose, they work just as hard as the people that, that win, and sometimes harder. But you gotta not just work harder, you gotta work smarter. And so uh, I think building that, that mindset right there uh, at, the, at the lower level, at freshman and at JV level, uh, those guys like Coach Taggart, um, he was the first quarterback I ever had that started the game as a sophomore. Tommy Frazier got hurt with an MCL with his knee, and uh, Coach Tagger came up and started and, uh, against Brandon and was like player of the week for that week. Then he went back down to the JV for the I next I got to add to that too, Coach. <laughs> I, was, I was a player of the week, and I remember after that game, Tommy Frazier walking by my locker and saying, you better enjoy it because I'll be back next week. <laughs> But uh, Willie had been our freshman, freshman quarterback. He had been our JV quarterback. Uh, Tommy, when he was with us, he played youth league in ninth grade. He didn't even play at the high school level, but he was our JV quarterback as a 10th grader. When we went to the playoffs, we brought him up. And his first pass, I remember, he threw it up in about uh, five rows up in, 
in the bleachers on his first pass. He was so juiced up <laughs> on there. But uh, these young men, they, you know, we were doing the same thing and continuing to involve with what we're doing. And so they had, like running our option, Coach Taggart had done that for uh, 16 games, 16, 17 games and practices and continuity. So when he steps in as a, as a junior, he was ready to go. So I think what you're seeing now more so, there's more ninth and 10th graders that are making contributions. Uh, the, and I don't know, you know, maybe they're getting better coaching at the youth league and they're developing maybe a little bit quicker. But uh, that was our philosophy of how we tried to, how we tried to do that. Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, no. Will, I, ca I call him you coach. You can call me coach. You can call me coach, but no. <laughs> Those days are behind me. He's always coach to me. <laughs> coach, can you explain your role? Yeah, I'm what they classified a senior offensive consultant. We had to come up with, well, I'm senior because I'm the oldest guy there. <laughs> uh, offense because I I'm you know have my eyes on the offense and sit in the offensive meeting. And consultant, I, I, I'm there to. You know, I'm a sounding board, and, and uh, you know, I have, I have the respect of the other coaches there. Um, you know, last year we had Danny Hope as our offensive line coach who had been head coach of Purdue and a head coach at Eastern Kentucky. Well, Danny had played for me for five years in college when I coached in college and had coached his first four years at Manatee. So, you know, and then Coach Taggart played for me. So I had a couple people there already that, uh, you know, had, had some respect for me to begin with. But uh, when Coach Taggart, uh, the – Second year he was there, we had, they had an open date, and I went up to watch him practice. And he talked to me after practice. He said, I want to see if I can get you somewhere on my staff. And so I said, well, when the season's over, I'll come on up and we'll talk about it. And we were able to work something out. And we broke 30 offensive records this year at South Florida. Uh, just a couple that I'm going to pat ourselves on the back. We were number one in the nation in team rush yard per game improvement. We were number two in the nation in team rush yards per carry. Um, we were number three in the nation in, in uh, greatest scoring improvement increase. We increased almost 17 points a game. Um, we were number one in the nation in red zone offense improvement. We went from uh, near the bottom of the red zone offense in touchdowns of 33% to 68%. And that's critical. You know, if you can score when you get down there, don't have to settle for field goals or turn it over on downs, uh, that helps. We had 68% uh, in, in that. So when you're able to run the ball, uh, we ended up 10th in the nation in rushing. We had a quarterback that was a gifted athlete, a lot like uh, Tommy Frazier and, and Coach Taggart. And, uh, you know, they were able to turn a negative into a positive, And the kids believed in what we were doing. And we got better and better as the season went along. You know, it was different from going from the West Coast offense to the Gulf Coast offense because of the tempo and the, even the way you call plays because you have to speed up what we're saying. And uh, Coach Tiger did a marvelous job of evolving throughout the season. So, uh, you know, right now we're way ahead of where we were this time a year ago. We were still on the drawing board, uh, reinventing ourselves. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We left one player off from Manatee County that wasn't with us this year. Uh, Derek Calloway was a starter preceding that. Uh, he didn't take care of business in the classroom, uh, but he's working hard right now, and we're hoping that he'll, he will rejoin us this summer. He's making good progress now, and uh, so that's, that will be part of our new recruiting class, hopefully. One thing I want to add before we get to Bob Turner. 
as a trustee, we get information on student success. And we just got information about our student athletes. And the success rate is over 70% graduation in four years, four years. And that's for all the student athletes. For the general population at USF, it's just over 67%. So it's showing you that with the discipline and in athletics, we're doing a really good job. So I'm really proud of the success of the, the, the student part too. I, I got to add to the academic part. Um, <clears throat> that's one of our goals as as football team is is to get a team GPA of a 3.0. That's our goal. Um, that's tough to do as a football team when you got 115 guys, but that's our goal, and and that's been our goal, and we've been getting closer to that goal each and every year. And, and this past fall, we had our biggest um, GPA. Um, especially during the season, but the biggest one overall, and that was at a 2.82 team GPA at the time uh, this past fall. Again, um, in the last spring, we was at 2.7, 2.75, so we went up, and we had over 51 guys over 3.0, so we're very proud of that, and our guys have taken pride off the field, and, and it w it's not by chance that we're winning on the football field. You know, we, once we started winning off the field, and I always said that from the beginning. Once we take care of our business off the field, the winning will come on the football field. And that's what we're starting to see now. So guys are they're winning. They love winning. Coach talked about it. And winning is fun. You win in the classroom. You went off the field. You went on the field. It's pretty cool. You start to enjoy college a lot better, you know. <laughs> so we want to keep winning. All right, Bob. Well, I think um, what you've seen with our football team, they grew up from those from early in the season. You know, uh, we had a young football team. We had a young football team that was learning how to run our offense, a, a new offense, and a young football team that was learning how to run a, our new defense. You know, and it took a little time for those guys to gel. And, um, and I think early in the year, not only did we have all those things to be concerned about, but we had a, a former player that had passed away and, and – that affected our guys big time, you know, mentally, you know, and I, I don't think anybody can really sit back and really understand what our players went through, and some of them was there when, when it happened to them. So I think dealing with a lot of those things kind of slowed the process of us, us getting better, but once we got ourselves back together, things were totally different, and I would say that Navy game um, had some mistakes here and there, but uh, we wasn't completely healthy. Our quarterback wasn't healthy, and our running back wasn't healthy, and we still had a chance. So um, I thought our football team grew up from early in the year, um, and and they grew up quick and started to play the way they were capable of. And I think um, what you'll see from now on is that team that you saw towards the end of the year that was playing at a high level and playing with a chip on the shoulder, you know, and um, and we got to keep that chip on our shoulder no, long, no matter how long the layoff was. We had too long of a layoff in the bowl game, and we let that chip go, and I'm still having nightmares from it, but we'll get it back. <laughs> yes, Derek? Uh, talk a little bit more about quarterback. Mm -hmm. We have Quentin Flowers, who had an outstanding season. Um, everybody in the country is talking about this kid everywhere I go. You're like, that quarterback you guys got is awesome. That quarterback you got, that running back you got. It's pretty cool to go around and hear that. Um, we also have Ashante Willard, who transferred from um, UCLA, um, who was committed to USF before I took the job. And um, when I got the job, he didn't want to come with me. You know, but I think he went out west and realized, you know what, I think I need to come back and be with Coach T and the Bulls. So, um, and then you have um, Brett King. And then we have a freshman coming in, Chris Aladokin from Tampa. That's going to come in. And all those guys will have a chance to compete um, like everybody else. You know, it's, it's Quentin jobs to lose. Um, if those guys want a job, they got to go take it. You know, and if Quentin want to keep his job, he's got to keep it. 
It's very simple, and it's like that at every position. So um, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited to see the competition, though. That's going to be fun to watch this spring. But it's great to be in that position when I first got here. <laughs> Yes, sir. Sorry. What's your message to your high school seniors that are looking at USF football program? Um, I would tell them first and foremost is take care of their high school team and, 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 and their grades at school, you know, because without that, it's not going to work. You know, so finish strong academically, finish strong athletically, and um, keep an eye on the Bulls. You know, the Bulls are a team to, to look out for, you know, and um, – Great things are happening for the Bulls, and I think we'll all we'll show that. You know, we, we don't have to talk about it. You know, we're, we're intending to show it, and, and I'm sure it's something they want to be a part of. It's something special. Yes, ma'am. Um, simple question. When you're looking for the talent around the county, you're mm -hmm. trying to get it for the county. Are you looking for an athlete player uh, combined with the GPA? Um, I think you look at all of it, you know. Um, I know for, she asks, um, what are we looking for in a student athlete when we're recruiting them? Um, and there's three things that I judge our football team on, our players on. And, and this one is to being the best football player you can be, being the best student you can be, and having the best character you can have. That's what I judge our guys on. And you got to have at least two of the three in order to be on our football team. You can't just have one and be on our team. It's, it don't work that way. You know, you have two, then we can work whatever which one you was, you're struggling in, we can work with you to get you better and, and help you out. So uh, when we go out and look for them, we're looking for smart, we're looking for tough, we're looking for highly competitive football players, you know, that are good people. You know, that is so important. Um, I talked earlier about surrounding yourself around good people. That is so important to have good people around you. But you got to have good players. Um, they got to be highly competitive. I think it'll be hard to play at USF if you're not highly competitive because you won't be able to keep up with the rest of us. You know, um, you want guys that hate losing, you know, willing to do what it takes to win. And, and I, when I say win, that's on and off the field. But um, that's what we're looking for, smart, tough, highly competitive. Um, guys with big dreams that want to do things big. And um, I always say this, and I don't know if this – right thing to say or not, but I try to find a bunch of Willie Taggarts, you know, <laughs> guys that guys that are highly motivated, guys that want to be great, guys that just want to be the best at what they do, you know, and, and guys that 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 not going to let anything get in the way of, of what they're trying to accomplish. Yes, mother. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Well, that's, that's why she's my mom. Okay, that's why she's my mom. Um, spring game, April 16th. It's going to be on, on campus in our uh, soccer stadium. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we also have our women's clinic the same day on, on April 16th, and that's been fun the last couple of years that we've been doing it. It's been getting bigger. Um, I think a lot of husbands out there are starting to like it, and they're starting to send their wives there so they can watch the game and enjoy it a little better during the year. So, um, but And then we also have our high school coaching clinic coming up, and, and this is the first time we're doing that at USF. We have some really nice speakers that's going to be there. Uh, Tony Dungy is going to be the keynote speaker. Um, Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator at Clemson, is going to speak, be a keynote speaker. Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator at the Bucks going to be a keynote speaker. Um, and then we have like four high school coaches, some in the Bay Area and around the state. That's going to be there. And that's on April 1st and 2nd. So um, it'll be a big time clinic for us. And I'm really excited about that and get some great high school coaches and little league coaches there to learn some football. So yes, sir. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of people checked the Bulls out this past year, you know. Uh, we don't really have to tell them much about what we did. They all seen it, you know. But um, i tell you what, recruiting is a little different. 
than what it's been before. Um, it's, it's easy to get in the door now. It's easy to talk to kids. And again, it's fun when they know already what you've accomplished, you know, but um, getting this door, getting in the door is just half the battle. You know, you got to, you got to recruit day in and day out. You know, I'm always saying this is recruiting is like brushing your teeth and combing your hair. As soon as you stop, you start to look bad, you know, so um, <laughs> we don't want to look bad anymore. So we got to keep doing that day in and day out. And uh, with all this social media and all that stuff, um, it's, it's become a little tougher. But um, every single day you got to keep doing it. You know, you got to build those relationships. And for us, it's just getting them on campus. We feel like we have a beautiful campus and we can get them on campus and get them around our people, uh, we have a great chance. You know, what I'm shocked about is being there in the Bay Area on how many kids or the parents that live there that haven't been on our campus. I'm shocked by that, but I get it. They all go down to Ray J and they don't come on our campus, so it's really important for us to get them on our campus to see that uh, we have a beautiful campus. Yes, Bob. <laughs> I'm on the camera. Uh, yes, we're exploring multiple options. I don't want to say it on the record, um, but we do have a lease with the Tampa Sports Authority, and we need to honor that. Obviously, we will. But we don't know it off the top of my head, but I know that we, as a university, would like to see it on campus or adjacent to campus because of the camaraderie, just like Florida and Florida State, UCF. Uh, we think the student involvement and the feel of, of the game, even though I really like Tampa Stadium, it's really hard to beat from, a, from a watching the game. But bringing the students in this, on, and we got 41,000 people on the Tampa campus, that's a lot. And, and speaking of that, anybody that wants to have a tour, I know he's a really busy guy, but that's where I come in. Anybody that wants to have a tour of our athletic facilities, we'd be glad to do it. And if you want to pick up season tickets, we'll help close the deal. But really, you can just contact me, and we'll get you with the right people. We have some fabulous facilities. Um, we've really done a good job. But you know, whether it's women's rowing that's kicking off here in this area, and then our women's softball and our men's baseball facilities, they're really nice. And then. We've got the basketball facility with Les Muma's contribution really big and with the new football area there. You can go up to Notre Dame. We were up in Notre Dame and saw their facilities and you see ours and, you know, we hold our own. So Willie's got a lot of tools. I would say this too um, about that on campus stadium. I think it all starts back to that unrelenting fan base that I talked about. You know, we got to get that going again. You know, Ray J used to be rocking around here and, and these last bad years um, stopped that for whatever reason. But now we can put those years behind us and get Ray J rocking again. And I think if we do that, then those other things will fall into place. But we definitely need to get Ray J rocking again. Absolutely. And there's a ticket number thereafter. And they also, they don't necessarily want to do a medal, not to say that UCF is in a nice stadium. It is a nice stadium, but we're, we're looking for individual seating, and if we can get to 35, 40,000 is a target I've heard thrown around as a minimum size, and then we can grow it in phases the way that Florida Field did, um, and trying to look towards some boxes also, the corporate support, no different than baseball. And all that money, and the Iron Bull pin I'm wearing today, the, every single Iron Bull represents one additional student athlete that's getting fully funded. So. Uh, there's one here in the crowd today. Lynn, stand up. <laughs> they make a difference. Coach, I'm picking up my four season tickets this year, so I'm going to show for one. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. Hey, it works. You got to get a new one. A new fan. Okay, we can get one more. There you go. There you go. Nice. <laughs> it's working. Um, I just wanted to say. Absolutely, absolutely. We need that fan base. So we need, we need to get some more people in the stand to help us. That was a big part of uh, our success this year. You know, um, 
just being in our home stadium and our fans getting behind us. I see our players rocking. Then I look up and I see the whole stadium rocking. I'm like, this is pretty sweet right now. We need to keep it this way, you know, and it's their stadium. But it made a big difference in our football team, a big difference. And, and um, I don't want to make that like it's something, a small deal. That's a big deal for us. And I know as a young man coming out of that tunnel and seeing a place packed and rowdy, um, that, that brings a little energy to them. Anything else? Oh, it's getting too long. Jeez. <laughs> well, uh, one last thing. Hey, I really do appreciate every single one of you. Um, and like I said before, we can't do this by ourselves. Uh, but each and every last one of us can do our part and help get someone else on board. That's what it's going to take slowly but surely. But this can be one heck of a program here in the Bay Area that we all can be proud of. I, I do believe that it's going to get there. I believe it. Everything I fantasized about in my life has happened to me. And this is just one of those things, again, that I fantasize about having that place packed. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen because I know all of you are going to help me out on that. Appreciate you very much. Go Bulls and go Manatee County. I, I want to thank you all, the three local legends, for being here. Uh, I mean, this we could have gone on for hours, I think, asking questions. And thank you for sticking around and answering these questions. And I think there's a lot of excitement and engagement in the room. And hopefully next year you can come back after 10-plus wins and uh, talk to us more about the future of USF. So I really appreciate that. Uh, just a few things real quick. Uh, Manatee Chamber has our Pancakes and Politics this Thursday, March 17th, to talk about the legislative session, what occurred in Tallahassee. Uh, we, the Chamber has our appreciation luncheon March 18th, this Friday, at our downtown office for Chamber members to come and have a, a, a free lunch on behalf to, uh, to really show our support for our members and uh, thank them. And then Dan Miller, Presidential Election Insight, former Congressman Dan Miller on April 4th. He'll be speaking and analyzing the presidential election. We have flyers on your way out. And again, thanks again to Kaiser University and Mosaic, and thank you to USF and, and our speakers today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.